Hey there, party people. Welcome to Monday morning. I believe... Is it Monday? Man. What a weekend. <laughs> what a weekend in that I don't sleep anymore, but that's fine. You know, kids, it's part of the deal. I feel like sleep's an afterthought. Nobody thinks you do it anyways. People I always like, hey, uh, yeah, let's, let's meet tomorrow morning. I'm thinking, probably up at four or five. So we can either like meet at five or 4.30. And they're like, how about 8.30? And I'm like, like noon for me. We can do 8.30. So it's just uh, it's fun. Hope everybody had a good weekend. I did. I had an awesome Saturday. Being dad's pretty awesome. All right, here we are with our break shot. So we left off last time. We're basically just gotten the rig off of the car. And now I'll work on getting the fun part of getting it through the trees and off the ground. And then, you know, I was kind of thinking, I was looking at the badge here and how dead it is. And I was like, oh, you know, I can just, three kids, dude, I feel like you deserve an award. I feel like, yeah, three kids. My second comes in the final countdown. I got 30 days left. 30 days of one kid freedom. Yeah. It's funny. My uh, my cousins uh, or nieces, nephews, brother-in-law, sister-in-law had another one, I don't know, two weeks ago. And I'm like, like, oh, you want to hold them? And I'm like, I got six weeks. Back off. I'm going to enjoy my childless, well, my babyless arms for the next. Dude. It's painful some days. I was like, Okay, let's. I feel like the, the good to bad is like sometimes like one to three or two to three, and then the, the bad to good can be kind of the same. But like the good just weighs so heavy, and the bad just doesn't weigh as much. So I think it makes it worth it. Three kids, dude. I grew up in a family of three, so I know. I know what that's all about. Second one is a daughter as well, which I'm excited about. I grew up with sisters. It's just so much easier to me. I don't know. Maybe my male instincts are like, you don't need competition, bro. Just keep it, keep it to three women and you're good. Then you don't have, I don't know. The main reason I think is that I just don't want anybody to break my shit, you know, which I remember doing to my dad, that poor man. I'm sorry, dude. I love you. I don't mean to break your stuff just happened so yeah girls are just cool awesome yeah dude you know it's funny i shot it's i shot the uh i shot in austin i feel like i've shot there well i've shot at the what the circuit de americas at least twice and then i shot like the a series of uh like the trd pro version they were doing like a, a gunmetal gray color. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Before three comes. Yeah. So, yeah. Shot in uh, Austin. I love that city. Good times. You know. It's, uh, it's a funny uh, fun place to shoot. Anywho, back to the shot. I was going to pull up some old badges that I shot of this particular car. Well, not this car, but like other Toyota stuff. And I was like, nah, I don't want to cheat. I want Because my plan in the end is to kind of give you, I'm going to give the layered file. I'm going to hand out the layered file, the raw files, and a thing you guys can download and do for yourself. So uh, we'll post that um, in the comments. Well, I'll do it in the description once all this is done. That way everybody gets an opportunity to kind of do this along with me on their own if they want. Or uh, Now, Twitch doesn't keep these up forever. Um, I will have them on YouTube and Behance. 
uh, for free for a while. Behance right now is is on subscription base uh, until twi until I become a, a partner or, or whatever um, on Twitch. It'll be free until then. It'll be free on YouTube. Uh, but once uh, if I ever get to paid partnership uh, on Twitch, then I will. Uh, then it'll all be subscription based. So, whoa. Lots of pressure there, goat. I don't know about goat. There's a there's a lot of retouchers. Well, even the retouchers I, I work with and hire for my jobs, uh, I have respect for. So, Vicus, if you're out there, yeah, you're amazing. Sharma Vicus or Vicus Sharma, by the way, one of the, one of the also a goat. This guy, my favorite. You know, it's funny. There's things that I I'm really to me. I don't know as the photographer, content creator, whatever. I really like the. Uh, would you say composing the image i like the details i like having the things stand out that i want but like color grading is so subjective and i really like to have my have a guy like hand that off to someone else just for just to have them put their thing in there like it's just i like i like to kind of mix it up a little bit because it gives me a chance to i don't know you work on these things and you're like and that's all you see. And then you step back and you're like, oh, it looks like crap. And you're just trying to be happy with the stuff. And I feel like if I, I kind of hand off the final portion of the images to somebody else and let them do their thing and then come back to it uh, with a few notes, then I'm pretty happy. Uh, yeah. That's that. But in relationship to, the, to this badge here, I think I'm just going to show you guys here how to airbrush it. Uh, and maybe we'll reference some badges online um, just for pic pictorial reference as to what it looks like. But I think this is a this particular angle isn't a tough airbrush, so we'll do it on our own. Um, yeah, we'll get started here because I don't have too much time. I have a ooh, I have a meeting in three hours. It's been a busy one, not as busy as I was expecting, but certainly busy. I'm just turning off our doors layer and looking at the light that we have on here, making sure we've got separation between the mirror and the door here. And then we'll have to mask that out. So I was thinking maybe, just maybe, move over here. Maybe we'll, we'll see at the end. Maybe we'll bring some of this stuff we shot here into there and close this fully around the back of the vehicle and just pretend there's nothing behind it, but being like coming in you know, like a U-turn. Well, I would love for everybody to pay the subscription fee. Uh, it's funny though, because you know I follow streamers all the time, and and they're like, subscribe for chat. And I'm like, nah, I don't know. I feel like I have so many subscriptions for stuff. It's kind of hard to keep up with everything. But thank you, I appreciate it. Props to you guys. Whew. Man, don't not not get enough sleep. Thing it weighs on you. Anyways, let's get to business. That's why we're here. There's our door panel. Kind of looking at it here. I'm looking at the so what I'm looking at is I'm looking right here. I'm looking at the differences between what we added and what we took away. What we've airbrushed over the top. I'll look at relook at our rig removal here. It looks pretty clean, dudes. Now we've got. I'm gonna notice. Yep, now I'm gonna look right here. Paying attention to right in this area. Again, we're looking at this thing from far away. I, I've noticed, oh, we got a little bit of stuff which is going on in here. Um, this is a little bit of darkening in there. And a little, it's a little muddy right here. Like, I'd like this. If I could draw on this, good night. New layer. We'll go to a, like a regular brush here. <laughs> Just give me something. Oh, that's a weird one. Going out of the comfort zone. Be here. All right, that works. It does not like when I push all the buttons. It just goes crazy on me. Control A, delete. All right, Control D, deselect, rush. 
So yeah, uh, back to what we were looking at here. Um, I'm looking at, I really like these. So we're looking to, again, reinforce the design of the vehicle. We've got this here, which has got this like super odd, super, super odd. And so, got a phone call. Later. It's super odd, like a little bit of a bend in there. Whether that's meant to be part of it or not, I kind of want to smooth that out. But I really like these circular moves here that will uh, reinforce. That's kind of the game plan now. Um, I think first off, let me make sure I didn't touch anything weird here. Uh, delete layer. That's what I want. Uh, first off, get rid of the before we forget this. Get rid of that. We go to a new folder here, and we'll call it Headlight. And we might, we might get loose and use the stamp tool on this one. We just gotta figure out what in here, if anything. That's all, to me that's all looking like Rig that's in there. Riggity riggity rig. All right. Yeah. No, nope, I can't get loose. We're gonna have to use the uh, use brushes from here on out. Just can't. Yeah. Nitty gritty. Always nitty gritty. Always about the details. I just can't come to get sloppy and try and stamp something out and then have to go back and do what I've been doing that works. We're at 100%. Whew. Living dangerously. I feel like there's a glitch happening here. Am I? <gasps> Is it the Matrix? Flashing on the screen, right? Or am I crazy? Am I crazy? I'm gonna rotate my screen here for the, the layout just to kind of be at the angle of my hand and the brush. Check this. Uh, I have to text somebody. Oops. Uh, be impatient, guys. I'm painting this out here again. This is this is one of the arms, extension arms. Um, and by the way, at the end of this, I'm going to throw everything up there. I'll throw the Lightroom folder up or the Lightroom catalog. That way, you guys can have. I'll probably throw some adjustments on this at the end through Lightroom. I usually like to do that. And the way they actually started was, uh, you know, you get hired for these jobs. Well, retouching gigs. I get hired for retouching gigs. And then I'd have to go back. And they would be like, oh, well, we only have, we have 12 images. It's flickering, right? It went crazy. I have to stop and start again, but I don't want to. Um... Get retouching gigs. And they would ask. They're like, oh, we only have the money for one shot, but we shot 12 shots. So why don't you just go ahead and do the first one? And they're like, okay. So I do the first one. They'd be like, that's great. You did a good job. Can you send us the layered file? And uh, we're just going to take the other 12 images in house. And I was like, but 
they just wanted to like see how I would do stuff and then do retouching it on their own based on how I did their hero shot. I was like, well, we can figure out how to kind of kill that. So I started to do, I do everything completely neutral in Photoshop. No color grading, no nothing. Just kind of put the pieces together. And then I would export that as a flat tiff. And then bring that into Lightroom and do my color grading there. And then export that. Yeah, I know. Export that. And then, I mean, I don't know. It's funny. This stuff's messed up. But then when I'm doing, you know, when I'm in business and I'm doing projects and jobs, like I'm always trying to get things. You know, if I'm also producing and I'm kind of just, a lot of times I just get like a, a budget, like here's your budget for the shoot. And I got to cut corners where I can, like, you know, I would do the same thing. So I can't hate on them. I just got to outsmart that process, right? So, you know, I started bringing stuff into Lightroom and doing the grading there and then bringing it back into Photoshop. And then they'd be like, can we get the layered file? And I'll be like, yeah, you can have the layered file, but the color grading is done separately. So... You know, I can't send you the, you know, the second it starts to get complicated, you're like, yeah, I can send you the, the layered file plus the flattened layer file with the Lightroom file uh, and the color adjustments. And they're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whatever you just said got really expensive. Uh, how much did you charge to do all of them? So you just kind of work around it. And it all kind of comes together. All right, so we've cleaned that up. You know, unfortunately, kind of a bummer. The uh, the polarizer gives you this like rainbow effect here. So a lot of times, what you have to do is like, I'll go in here, hue and saturation, and I'll just kill all the color on it. It's some. Um, We'll kill it till we start to see the rainbow. There's, we start to see the rainbow, right? I'll fill that with black, and then I'll just brush that over the headlight where I'm getting this rainbow effect from the polarizer. Like my dad always said to me, smarter, not harder. Is also why I'm my own boss slash company. This makes it. You can see there's like some blue in here. So it's it's reflecting all these colors, which we'll keep in mind for later. I'm just kind of cleaning this out. Get rid of this rainbowy effect here. We'll see if we can just take some of the sky color. Just like kind of reflect it back in there. Now it looks warm, which is weird that it looks warm. Because the color of the shot is so blue. Do that. Get the color out of there. I'm not going to worry about the other headlight just yet. Let's go here. Do that, and then I'm going to go a solid color. Put this on color over the top because we want to bring this headlight color back in there, but make it but make it more better. I up orange when I sample it or pink. We go orange red. Like to me, visually looks close. It's interesting. I was in another discussion with uh, a few other streamers online, and we were talking about well, they were talking about uh, the issue with people. One, having different color screens. Two, being colorblind and working in these, uh, you know, having people work on, you know, like cross, like across teams. And everybody's kind of in their own, uh, not necessarily color space, but saying different things because their monitors are calibrated differently. And we had all kind of come to the conclusion that the only way to kind of overcome all that would be to just 
call out numerical values. You know, like this. You can do CMYK colors, uh, or you could do um, these numbers here, which are kind of like uh, web colors. But then uh, they also correlate with Pantone colors, which is cool. So then everybody's kind of on the same color realm. Or, you know, if you're working on something, you then want the same color of black. Let's see here. So that's. the oranges here. Brighten it up a bit. Okay, we'll get, I like to take things to see them far and then bring them back. So that's there. The hue and saturation here. I'm just gonna start bringing this back. So, all right. Um, in there. And what I'll do is click on this, go solid color. I control click to pick it. And we'll go just grab some of this blue from this guy here. I think this might work on overlay. Soft light. Like soft light gives me a little bit more of what I want. And then we'll just take this way down. And the 30. Once we throw adjustments on there, it'll crank up the saturation. So this is obviously way too much, too much. So we'll take that back down as well. There, it's it's cool, but it's it's noticeable, but not too intense. There, now we're more product correct. And I'll bring that back into. Let's turn these off to see what else is orange. There's a little orange in here. We'll come back in there. Just a little bit in here. Just, just like the light reflecting back into it. And I don't see anything in that one. We'll come here. And we'll basically do what we did just a tiny bit because I only see a little bit of that rainbow in there. Do that, and then we'll take this one and brush that in there, and that blue in there. There. You know what? We're here. Let's do the badge since this is its own piece of work. Man, I got two phone calls. What's going on here? guys I have to 90 percent of the time it's spam and then some of the time it's actual work i'm sometimes i wonder like how many jobs i've lost because things have gone to either trash or junk mail or spam you never know fun world we live in i was throwing you a curveball keeping you on your toes all right here we go so the first thing I'll start with here is the now the idea is like, all right, how would this look if we had uh, white? Normally what I've done is I would have put a, a foam core on the side to reflect the, the light or the sky back into the badge of the surface to then let's see if we can go, let's see if I can go here and try and get us a little reference image without totally getting in trouble. All right, look up uh, Toyota CHR. Find, find, find. Let's start with not studio. It looks slightly desirable, realistic. This is pretty close. <laughs> I 
This is like super retouched, but it looks cool. Let me just change that. If it ever, if I can find it. Sorry, it's taking so long. There we go. Oh well, eh, it's close, but you can see the you see the badge. It's it's the hybrid badge, which is fine. Maybe we'll kind of get into how to kind of make our sheet metal look a little like this, where we brush in some highlights and darken some shadows. Let's see if I can zoom in on here. Oop, oop. Okay. Oh, there we go. So it gives you some idea. That's actually horrible. It gives you some reference as to what's going on here. Yeah, it's you know it's funny. I think that it, because it is a giant mirror, it's kind of the reason that I like uh, shooting cars. Like I'm a car person, but I'm not like crazy car person. Yeah, well, that might be because I have kids, but whatever. Let's see here. There we go. So I think we'll throw this into, this is all headlight stuff. So we'll put that all together. My headlight. We go kind of brush here, add a new layer. And kind of just start brushing this in here. Just kind of sampling some stuff. I, I'm thinking I'm going to go with like a lighter into a fade darker just to bring a little, we see a light color to fade into a dark to just kind of bring in some of the stuff that's already there without going too crazy. I don't know. I don't want it to look fake. I do it how I like to do it, not usually how the client wants it per se. Just do super subtle. Basically, I'm just kind of matching what's there. We'll brush that in and see how it looks. Usually, uh, pull that with black. Go back to a regular brush here. See where we end up. This got all funky on me. It's usually just like the face here. The actual, uh, not the brush I want. Those aren't my mat. Those aren't my brushes. There it is. difference was that the pressure of the pen was actually affecting each stroke and I don't want that I just want to keep the size of the actual brush on there and then shift click my way to kind of fill this it looks like it's like way different than what's there and it is for now but what we'll do is we'll just kind of end up then changing the opacity probably throwing some gradients on there brushing it in slightly lighter This thing's wigging out this morning. I'm just going along the inside of this. How 
that often doesn't look right off the bat, even though you're covering. We'll do just a uh, brightness and contrast on here just to see what we're painting since it was so dark. Funny how you get rid of all the little imperfections in there and it starts to look not so great. You tend to bring the hot spots back in just because it makes it look natural. We're just kind of cleaning up the chrome because we want it to look want a pretty sexy badge. I'll start with the face here. Is that 100%? Yeah, I am. All right. I'll take this down and see what that looks like. It's giving us some shape. Now, there is another face underneath here because it's got like this, I'll dry it out for you. The surface of this thing goes, it goes like this, and then you have a little, uh, actually, like, it goes like this, a wrap around like here. Then you have a little level, and then another round area like this. Then it comes down. So you have this, this surface here of highlight and this surface here of highlight, this front plane, and then these planes here, which face the opposite direction. So the idea is to kind of work within that to kind of keep that three-dimensional realm. I'm going to go back to here. Is that where I was working? Oh, yeah, right. We're on the mask layer. So I painted this in, and we're going to kind of brush this back in here as well. Now, I'm being kind of sloppy with the highlights that are already there because what I want to do is I'll end up masking those out anyways or end up drawing in my own. I'm not too concerned about it. So, in here a little bit this is weird because it's it's so this is actually reflecting the this is reflecting the badge back into it it throws off our shape a little bit it's going to be kind of pick where it stands out to me the most brush it back in I still like it here We've kind of cleaned up all of our reflections. It's weird, it's acting like it's not 100%. I can see through it. That's just because I lightened it. I'm going to back out of this. Turn this back on and brush this in here. That's what, this is what I was saying right here. That looks like a mess, right? That's what we want. So I'm going to do, because from far away, it's better than it was. And then what I can do is, there's two ways I can go about this. One is kind of match some of the, I can either mask this away and see what's underneath it again, or I can take some of the colors that were there before. I'm going to clip this and then brush 
Turn it off. Turn on my soft brush. It's funny. So there's, there's the, it's funny that you mentioned that about the stuff you see, uh, that you would never think to retouch, right? That uh, there's good and bad that comes with that. The good is, hey, you know, sometimes I get to bring out stuff that I might not have seen before that it'll now look better. The other thing is you end up spending so much time on stuff that nobody cares about that it can end up being a waste of time, right? But I just kind of want to bring this out just a little bit. I think what I'm going to do now is now go into the opacity of what I put over this. Just start to bring back some of what's underneath. We'll start with 30% here. Oh, I'm brushing it away. Brush some of it away, but what I want to do is tighten this back up. I'm just gonna kind of see what I brushed in. I'll go in and let's just start cleaning up the edges here. The stuff that I do see. We're at 100 percent now. So another thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is that so I put this into a group. I'll call this badge. And what I do is I'll do the main mask that we can, if I hit uh, forward slash, it shows me what my mask is. And so this way, the mask of the object that, of the object that I'm painting on stays with it. Now, if I want to, if I want to hide this, I'll then put a mask on here, keeping my original cutout. That way, when I put this little gradient stuff on here, it's its own thing and it doesn't interfere with the mask that I've created for the object that I'm painting on. So again, all I want to do is keep the main stuff, uh, the important elements that I've created initially, that way I don't have to go back and redo them. Because if you brush like an opacity of a gradient back into that mask, you ruin the integrity of the, the mask that you created the first time. So try to keep everything as separate as possible. I'm going to get rid of this. Right. Just kind of cleaning up what we cut out so that way it works well with what we're trying to do. part here looks a little fat to me in relationship to the left side. So I can either fatten up the right side So to me, if you're looking at this entire image I'm gonna rotate this to zero Rotation, zero, zero. We'll kind of zoom out, look at this whole thing. So now we can see with the badge, it's looking pretty decent in relationship to the rest of this. We've got hot spots in there. Now what I can do is I'll go back, put in a new layer above it, Call it highlight. You know what? We'll call it what I like to call it. I love to call this glint for some reason. This is just the term that I use. Glint. Glints. 
We'll go to our brushes here. I have in here a brush that looks like a starburst somewhere. This is a flare. I'm going to go to large thumbs. Will it show me large thumbs? Keep scrolling until I find it. It's in here. You've seen these crescents? These I actually use for, for curly hair. That's a whole other tutorial. Right now we're looking for, oh, this looks like, these are it. This is kind of the, turn my caps lock off so you can see it. This is the highlights that you see. I'll just give you a full one so you can see what it looks like. See, we got one there. Whoa. So that kind of gives us our fake little highlight. Yeah, it makes it extra crispy. Bring that back in here. Too big. See? Hmm, look at that. Do that one a few times. Oh, too much. There we go. And we'll go in with our blur tool at like, I don't know, three. Give that a whirl. What Photoshop? I don't even know what you're talking about. So we'll go full screen, see how that looks. You're welcome. Thank you. A little bit of that sexiness in there. It's a bit much. So let's see what we can do here. If I can drop the opacity, yeah, the opacity keeps some of it. And I know that I mentioned that, like, I hate when you can tell that something's been Photoshopped because highlights aren't 100% white. Love it when I make a rule and then I break it. Here's the rule about breaking rules. Unless you can't tell that you broke your rule. <laughs> don't tell anyone you broke your rule. I don't know. I can't tell that those aren't 100%. They're at 74. But it looks better. So we keep it. And the badge looks better. We'll turn that on and off, see what it looks like. See that? Just look. It's not totally fake. We're making the whole thing bright white and it stands out on the car. It's just a little cleanup from the reflection in there. Boom. Looking good. All right. Now we want to kind of, I'm not, it's funny. Can't really half ass anything here. I don't want to. Let's see. How are we on time here? We're doing okay. Just okay. Let's see. Next, oh, we're on the sheet metal, might as well continue. We'll go to the, I'm gonna delete this so it doesn't get confusing. Uh, delete. No, delete. Uh, Let's we'll start just brushing out this. Create a new folder, call this one bumper. I'll we'll start airbrushing out this bumper. I get rid of some of this stuff. I'm gonna go back to like a real brush though. I can't use the uh, my glint brush. Main soft. There we go. This car's taking a beating. This is this one's gonna do kind of broad because it's there isn't a huge change color between the surfaces. I feel like the cleaning up of the bumper will be the most work. I'm at 100% here. Yeah, we're zero Fs with this particular maneuver. So we'll do that. And I like to, when I'm doing stuff, break it up into planes. We've got a plane, plane here that's facing up, a plane here that's facing a 45, a plane here that's facing directly in front of us. 
So we'll mask that out. Now it does cut into into the bumper. So we'll kind of play with how that works. What are it showing you guys what what button I'm pressing as I click? Like click and drag, click and drag. My grain layer is on, and we're not seeing that much. All right, so we'll kind of sheet this. I'm gonna to go to my gradient. We'll pop that there. I'm gonna sample this here. Make sure we're on that one, and we'll do that. And it brings it together. Sample this here and do that. Oops. I'm just kind of taking the edges of the color that's nearest to where I brushed. All right, and we'll do the, create a new layer. I'll do the one above it here, go back to our soft brush. This one I'm not gonna be as harsh because we get a somewhat, oops, somewhat smaller area here. Doing that, and that, just gonna, oops, slowly mix these together. And it doesn't want to sample our color for some reason. More Photoshop glitches with Wacom tablets. One, two, three. I'm clicking three times to sample the color. Well, two worked. 20% opacity to kind of smooth this out here. Quick click. Mask that off. Fill that with black. To our brushes and brush that back in as we want it. I clean that up. And then we have make a new layer for the third plane here. Back to my soft brush. Now there's all this little stuff here that I always like to just save for the end. Kind of merge, merge everything onto one layer. Now this part here, I think, because it does look so crappy. It's like, do I want to repaint the whole bumper? Not really, because it's a test. I would have shot with an ice car without crappy, but we'll I make maybe on here. I don't. Oh, I did brush something on it. All right, that's a spot right there. So we'll deselect that. Come in here, we'll make a new layer. This is going to be for our bumper bumper, the actual plastic area. Doesn't have any gloss on it. Yeah, it's it's a fun process when everything starts to kind of come together. Um, I think what I can do here with this part is just match what's there, and then if I want to, at the end, if we have time, I'll mask that bumper out, and then kind of make the whole thing darker. Oops. This 30% is extremely aggressive. So gross. Kind of making this darker here. Just kind of do this whole thing. We're like cleaning it up as we're here, anyways. What is this? I was just looking at the. Uh, we're streaming in multi platforms here, so I'm trying to see all the comments. All right here. Let's 
just alt click in these colors in here. All right, now we'll do mask on that. Look at the other stuff, fill it with black. We'll come back, we'll brush it in. Or maybe we'll brush it out and we'll do the opposite. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just overshoot. Got that, just a little bit of that lip of that shadow in there. I'll make a new layer. I'm gonna brush this in here. This is so sensitive, this, doing the tinier stuff. Now, the thing I'm trying to keep in mind here is like, all right, so we've got this bumper, we've got this piece here, we've got the cut, between this part of the bumper and this part of the bumper. We've got the highlight where this these planes turn, and then we have a shadow where this is cast onto here. So there's like three areas. So what I'll do is I'll paint for the highlight and then brush in the shadow as a clipped layer on top. I'm gonna sample this color here. Should give me what I'm looking for. I'll go to 100, see what this looks like. Give me what I want. I'm just shift clicking my way through this. And then, so we've got this, right? Now this is hotter than the other part. So I'll create a new layer on that. Gradient this. I'll sample this color here. Then I'll gradient, oh, flip it first. Control out G. Maybe I'll even take some of this here. A darker one. Kinda. So that highlight literally fades with the rotation of the sun. Oh, too dark there. So that's kind of where we want to be. Now we've got the shadow actually falls on top, so we'll create a new layer for that. This is the shadow that's cast from this part up here. We're basically going to be almost full black, I think. It's a little harder than I want, so I'm going to just make the brush bigger. Am I clipped? I'm not clipped. Control Alt G. There. So we've got. So this layer, we'll call, we'll put this uh, drop shadow. Or no, this is a cast shadow. Cast shadow. This is the highlight blend. And we have the highlight itself. We got some questions here. Uh, uh, how do you make the brush oval as circular? So when I click on my brush tool and I right click here, I have this part that allows me to make it oval or full circle. Um, you know, custom brushes are huge. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. Like I've sampled clouds. Like this here. This is just for show. We've got clouds. If I can make this one. You can literally white. You can literally brush clouds in as you want. And then you can get into actually mixing dual textures and dual colors. You can put a highlight on the cloud and a shadow color, and then have those paint together. Or you can do it, do them as opacities. Like I can go thirty or ten, and then you can do, you know, turn on your scattering and whatnot with your brushes. See brush settings, scattering shape dynamics. This allows you to then control, you know. And then you want, oh, I want a little angle jitter, a little roundness jitter, jitter on there, and I want size jittering. 
And usually I put the control on the pen pressure. Pen pressure, pen pressure. This this is just for so you can see how they work. And then this gives you like a whoa. When did this little funky thing on here? Yeah. So this gives you an idea here. You kind of go in. And then, you know, you're almost like you're making clouds or if you want to make smoke or however you want to, you know, gives you the opportunity to do that. But that's another tutorial, which we will get to. I'm going to cover everything, people. All right. It's that potty break time. I will, for the meantime, be right back.
Okay. Some with the mic on. Nobody said anything. I think about what I'd actually said before that nobody had heard. Really need to remember that. Anyways, I was saying that you could use the blur tool to make this line here. Look not so harsh. Notice for just adjustments. Close this out here. Rest of this mask. Not too, too worried about it because we can go in and fix it at the end. Blur tool. This is going to be that dark. Yeah. There. Now this is just our. Is it curves or levels? Curves. Because after we had done cleanup, it was like, hi, look at me, I'm a bumper. All right. That's the whole thing. I'm gonna pull back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this the new one. What's bothering me right now is this is so much hotter than this because we had airbrushed it out. What I'm do is put it in its own group. Stinky dog though. See what that looks like. In terms of a mask. It's kind of covering the area we want, and we want to just cover it here. Be just for. I bring this back up. Where it's not saying here. Look at me. Bring this down too. Sometimes you could sit there and work something to death, but I'm going to say, 
Top of my head, like that's good for now. This is where this was. This is zero. Bring this way down here. Just kind of not make it all about the bumper. Sometimes I can do this. I'm going to put these together and go call this bumper adjustments. And we'll go. That's that whole thing. You can see it. That's the whole section on and off. We just got rid of and cleaned up. I want to bring up the black level on this just a tiny bit. There. All right. Now the hard part, which is uh, the rig in the trees. Save this again. We're going to go up to our headlight we cleaned up. So yeah, let's just do a little bit quick review of what we've we've gotten done so far. So we come in. This is what we shot. This is our hero rig. So this is our background. This is our hero rig exposure of the vehicle. This is our these are parts that I'd like. So I had liked the non washed out white windshield with the cleaner portion of the front fascia. This is our door back here. What we've done is brought some of the highlight from the door exposure into the wheel here because we liked it. It looked sexy. Because we have a light, we have a shadow from the bar coming across the wheel there. Now we've removed the rig on here. And again, I I'd, I'd noted right before we cut the last episode, it's funny, you can see the bend in the hood there. We'll clean that up. Right before I'd ended this, that uh, I wanted this darker. And we'll do that. Towards the very end when we're looking at everything. This was the bumper and the badge. Cleaned up the badge, removed all the crap on the bumper. Then we have our bunch of bumper curves. So it's not so. And now that I'm looking at it, it's just a little heavy on the blacks. So I'm gonna come back here and just lift that up a tiny bit. That's better. All right, moving on. So this is probably where I would get funky with the it's really hard to airbrush this type of stuff so I'm going to combine stamping with a little bit of uh, feeling brush so see what this looks like Start stamping first. If it, that looks gross, then we'll move on to something else. This tends to look really sloppy as you're doing it. It's kind of a lot of mixing and matching so things don't look repetitive. And oftentimes it's a matter of like combining, like pulling a big giant section of some piece and then just getting rid of part of it so it doesn't, so like I use that whole thing there. So I'll just sample this and just get something in the middle to kind of go away from that. I want to bring some of this in here. I don't like that. So we get this lighter section here. I'm trying to start. You're looking all right. We're at 100% opacity on this. You can start to see. Angle. I can't find this. So the cool thing about this is that when we shot this, the trees were blowing. It was windy. So you're going to get some of that movement of the tree in with the movement and the rotation of the vehicle is pretty cool. Which I don't normally get in virtual rig at all. Well, I mean, you can, you can add like wiggle and, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff, but it, it doesn't, 
necessarily translate as well. Uh, I'm sure there are Voschelrig masters out there that are just so good at that. Um, or, you know, go in and they'll use the smudge tool or the liquify certain areas to kind of create the same effect. Um, I just haven't spent that much time with it. So for now, I'm just trying to get rid of this rig and make this look as clean as, as possible. So notice again, objects closer to the vehicle are not going to have as much motion. Well, not closer to the vehicle. Objects that are closer to the center axis of a rotation in a rig shot aren't going to have as much movement in them as uh, objects that are further away. So like this stuff here, because we're basically it's almost like the rear wheel is kind of staying in place and the front wheel is rotating the furthest away from it. Everything that's kind of in the center of that is going to kind of not have as much movement. So I kind of started big with this brush. And as I get into the details of this, I'll probably start to get a little smaller. I'm starting to see a big jump here. So I'm going to kind of get oh. better. That was sloppy to me. All right, we're getting there. I actually thought this was going to be, this usually is ridiculously more challenging than, oops. Most of the rig shots I do, this ends up being the most time consuming. Yeah, I'm just kind of working this out of here slowly. So sometimes I'll pick like a highlight like here, and try to match it up. I do notice that there's parts that I added in here that I bled over into the, yeah, see the door is in there. I'm going to mask that out. Cleanly getting rid of this. This is the door layer. It has our sheet metal on it. But I also did talk about bringing in something to kind of fill that hole back there. Let's see. Bring some of that back. How would we fill that hole back there with what we've the shots that we have? I'm gonna go to my bridge and see what pieces we have here. Looking kind of what's behind the vehicle. I mean, I feel like I can kind of cheat. The files are 20 and 21. 21 and 20 are in there. The question is, do we have, can I finish this part? This is 100% it is. 
see what that looks like. Again, what the other one looks like. So, same ish. Let's see which one we like the best. I think. This one has a lot of motion in it. Well, this one. This one has the most motion. This one has some motion in it. It gives us some texture in the background. Um, with our shot, we're looking at... Well, we have the... Yeah, we have time to fudge it, and then if we don't like it, get rid of it. So I'm going to just duplicate these layers here. The door was 21 and 20. I'm going to bring these up here. Wow. He's freaking out. As I'm using the Wiccan pen. Okay. All right, we'll drop that up there. There's a copy. Take 19. Copy of that. Turn these off. Drop the masks on them. I'm just looking to see. Oh. I wanted 20 and 21, not 19. Whoops. 21. We're just alt dragging them up there. I have copies of them. So this one. I mean, it turns harder. Let me see if I can manipulate this somehow. I'm just going to turn this on and see the opacity here. See if I can, if I took this here, I mean, I'm seeing like some remnants. <sighs> remnants of being able to continue that turn in there. That doesn't look like it's going to make it. So that one's probably out. This might, might be some warping. So I'm just going to do this kind of rough to see if I can get it to work. I'm just going to copy, paste this part, and then we'll mask it out. Fill that with black. Brush it in there as if it's there. And then I'm going to play with First, like, I might be able to just brush this in, get it to work. Experimenting here for a second. See if I can get this to work. It's what it's it's too harsh so I can try and I'm gonna get this I'm gonna get into my liquify here or my transform here we go filter no you know let's just do control T but I want to be I want it to be smaller cancel this I'm getting my mark marquee tool here because I want just the area I want. I'm looking at just this curb here. So we're gonna try and uh, won't let me transform that. What? Selection. Oh, because it's locked for some reason. Uh, probably because I had originally locked the layer. All right, let's try uh, Control T. There we go. I'm gonna go to warp. Try and. This thing to look decent in here. I don't want the I don't want to see past the wheel, so I'm guessing the wheel kind of ends there. And 
This is really pushing the limits of what this thing is Oops, meant to do here. Kind of getting it. Except that the Wacom tablet is glitchy. It's funky. I'm seeing what you're seeing. I'm just trying to see if there's any possibilities of making this work. And, all right, so we've got that. Uh, I'm not saying it works. I just want to see what we go behind it. It looks like, well, why am I seeing through this? It's not 100% here. Uh, let's rough this in and see what this looks like. So this is going to be, I'll line this back up with our car. Remember, we'll go to difference. B tool, brush, and line it back up. 100% back to normal. I'm going to brush this in just to see what it looks like over this one. I'll bring my curve back in. Fill this with black again. I mean, it's possible this particular piece is too fast so maybe this one will work back to our difference the thing that line up okay normal 100 percent mask I'll delete Got a zero on our brush might be a thing. We might be able to just, yeah. Some some problem solving in here with how this is. Let's see if I can just. There's a lot of problem solving in there. We won't know until we do it. Back to my hard brush. Just want to see what the wheel underneath here looks like. I'm actually going to do that. That's home. Uh, I don't want to mess up the mask that I already have there for some crazy reason. I'm going to bring this back. Brush that in. The curb's higher on the one that I dropped in. I don't mind that because it doesn't change perspective of anything just yet. We're still problem solving this area. Cutting out the wheels. I can adjust this background here to look properly. a lot of problems all in there because we're not even close I was like I don't like that go here and see if I can I'm gonna stretch I always don't recommend hold on alt this is the whole thing hold on shift Part of it. Right, so that gets it to go completely around the vehicle. But we do have weirdness happening here, but there is the ground that already exists. So maybe we can marry the two. 
So let's see, now I'm confused. This mask is for this. This mask is for the car, which we don't want to change ever. So I'm going to go here and play with this brush. Oh, you know, we already got one here. Let's use this one. We're going to start hiding this a little bit. So we see we've got some spiraling. Oops. This is the original that is there. Hmm. I bring this down. That's our warp starting to show up. Now we may have to abandon ship. It kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. Obviously, we don't have like a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna go way back. Let's see here. I'm undoing. What we get to about. It looked good. Uh, with Z, come back here. This is doable here. This is the area. Is that the area we brought in? Fill that. That wasn't fast enough. This is the area we brought in. Bring in more of this. Right. Part of me wants to brush this in to see if I can make it work. looking at this. So I'm gonna start at 30, see what we get here. Again I kind of bump up everything. So I'm just sampling colors and kind of just illustrating what this line would look like. This line. Twenty. Still just slowly working this. I'm at 10 now. Coming in. I'm going to five. Five opacity on this brush. I'm trying to just Move this out. It's, it's not super chunky, so it's still doable. I haven't sampled any new colors. Still working on the same color that we sampled earlier. Trying to define this edge of this curb here. I don't like this part here, so we're going to gradually Another thing we can do, and I'm kind of looking forward to showing this to you guys, is so we're like, oh, how do we mimic this um, curve here with motion? Well, one of the things we can do is do just like we did the grain layer, right? Make the grain, motionize the grain, and then warp it to fit. I'm going to go back to 30 open, 30 pace here. Warp it to fit. turn. I'm actually going from making this thing like a hard edge to a soft edge. We'll go back to 20 here. 10. Going 10. It's kind of reinforcing that hard edge there. Around that corner. 
Now, anything I do on the outside here is going to have to be redone and are mimicked on the inside. So we'll come here, rotate my brush, go to 30. I want to keep this dark area here. So this area needs to be solved as well. So we'll kind of just do the general cleanup. Go to 20. Just kind of, I'm sampling as I do this. I smooth it out. I think this is part of the rig shadow here. And I think what we'll do is all this stuff kind of comes together here. So I'm going to cover up new layer here. I'm going to start covering up this line so I can make my own. And we're going to, I'm going to solve this as I'm painting it. Make this brush a little wider here. Take some of this color. I don't like this dark area here. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Go into 30. Oops, I just swapped. Swap my colors. Putting that curve in there. I'm gonna kind of back up to see what this looks like. All right, so technically, what am I solving? All right, we got, we got the curb. I want the curb to be smooth. This thins out a little faster than it should, so I should probably make it a little wider. Uh, this is a little thicker than it should be, but this realistically, if this crowns really hard into the turn here, this is, this is realistic in terms of the way that it looks. I'm gonna make this smaller here. the top lighter. Go to 20, opacity. Bring this back up. There we go. This also looks little shadowistic, um, maybe the rig or something, tree branch. Yeah, you know, so we're just going to kind of bring this, make this arc more prominent. And I think what I'm going to do is start working this, create that grain that I was talking about. You know, I kind of want to put this orange on its own thing so I can manipulate it as I need to. But now we're brushing this around to follow the curve. And that will inevitably disappear with the curve. Oops. Now you can kind of see this curve here coming to life. It's funny, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it seems like it's been more prevalent lately than not. Why our photographers aren't doing their own retouching. I've the way I've always described it to clients is like, oh, they're like, yo, you know, we want to use our own retoucher, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you like my photography. You're hiring me because you like my work, right? Uh, and I ask them, like, well, what's your favorite restaurant? What do you like to go eat? Where's, where's your, and they only like, tell me. And I'm like, what if you went to that same restaurant? You're like, I, and you order your favorite dish. You're like, I'd like my favorite dish. And then they came out and they said, look, we know there's a chef you like. We had him go and get all the ingredients that you want for your favorite dish. But we're going to bring in another chef to make the meal with those ingredients. To me, I'd be pissed. 
Why are you changing the guy? So I look at it as like, look, I'm shooting this stuff for post. That's my background. That's where I come from. You know, I like to shoot with three cameras to get all the angles and pieces that I need to be able to put this stuff together. You know, I bracket for the exposures that I want, the highlights, blah, 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 blah. And in my head, I'm compositing as I'm shooting because that's the way that I think and look at things. Do this curb. I think once we elongate this top part here, it's going to start to be, uh, start to look a little bit more real here. Sometimes, like I originally didn't, looking at this, I was like, there's no way this is going to even come close to good or realistic. And now that we're kind of working it, taking our time, putting it together, totally looks realistic. So in the end, I just like to be a person putting the meal together after I've bought all the ingredients for the dish I wanted to make. That's who I am. You know what, if I'm making a special dessert and I want to bring in a sous chef to like help me make that, I do that. That's why I like to hand out, you know, hand stuff over for final color, grading. Sometimes when I'm done because I've just had my eyes on it for so long. I'll look further away at this thing. Let's see here. Let's see what this looks like. It's a little muddy, but I think it's getting there. I'm going to go here. 20%. I've made a new layer. I'm just going to start to clean all this crap up. And this is like a dark line in there between the two. I'm going to kind of mirror that or bring that in here. Twenty percent. See how this looks. There we go. I'm gonna do this on its own layer so I can blur it by itself. There we go. I tried going to twenty percent, and this thing was like, nope, not having it. There we go. Now we're seeing some of this, some of this detail come back in here. The edges. That's right. I stream on YouTube, Facebook, Behance, and Twitch all at the same time. Uh, Twitch doesn't keep the streams up forever. Hello, welcome. Alex. Gross. 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 A. Thanks for the thanks for following there, bud. All right, I'm gonna go back to the layer underneath here. Just kind of back up on this. Alex, that name sounds familiar. I feel like I'm gonna come in here and just make this whole thing throw a curves layer on here because it's a little, and I can kind of paint in the density the way that I want it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for coming out. We're just having some fun today. All this stuff will be up on YouTube and whatnot. That's really thick. Maybe. There. Oh, we got another one. Eat this meat. Delicious. Just kind of bringing this back here. Take some of the lighter stuff in here. Come 
wrong with this? Turn up this curb, clean this up. I'm going to think I'm going to just bring this here to this part. You know what? I don't even know that I need it. You know, it's dark in the back end of it. I mean, I still have this. Yeah, I do. Click on that and mask and put all this. You know what? We're going to put up all this stuff in there and then create a new mask. Brush this in just to make it darker. There we go. All right. So our grain. I'm gonna duplicate this. So this is and turn it off just so I know what I'm looking at here. This is 100 percent There's our grain. I'm gonna turn it off and on just so I can see what it looks like. So what I do is I'm gonna actually motionize this noise texture, but I want more contrast in it. So I think I'm just going to do an adjustment layer here, flip it to it, see if I can get that out of, yeah, see it's getting crunchy there. Ooh, it likes the contrast, brightness. There we go. Get it super crunchy. We can always bring it back. All right, so I'm going to merge these two. Then I'll overlay and save originally what I had had. And I'm going to go filter, blur, motion blur. And the angle of the turn. See how we're doing this here? And then what I'll do is warp this at the angle that I want. If I add too much motion, I kind of lose the crunchiness. So I'm going to duplicate this, get it even crunchier. I can merge these. Uh, overlay. Filter blur. Motion blur. There we go. So I'm just going to kind of get it in the general angle of where this starts at. I think that's where I want it. And then we can totally warp this to be, let's check on the speed here. Yeah, that looks good to me. So I've got that over the entire image, right? Don't need that. I'm just gonna cut out just this section. Although the brightness and color layer has made this thing heavier. Go Command C, Command V, turn that off, go to overlay. And then we'll start to warp this to match our road. Let me deal with the Wacom tablet here. I'm kind of just taking. So the speed's going to be tighter back here. You see how this grain is starting to affect the movement of the road here. So we're able to mimic some of that motion that's down on the ground by adding motion to this grain. Kind of mimic some of the arcs in there, but not get too crazy. So I'm trying to, right now I'm trying to see this stuff line up. Not so much here, because this I'm going to kind of fade out. On a mask. Here we go. Now we're starting to line up here. And I see I'm starting to get the motion lines into the grain of the area that we just airbrushed. All right, we're going to keep that. And then I'm going to adjust my curves on that layer. Or let's try brightness and contrast first. Let's see what that looks like. 
not using the Wickham tablet because here we go. See? No? Here, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can really see that. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna move it around a little bit. It's starting to look good. I'm checking the brightness on this to see where it fades, where I start to lose it. I can adjust the contrast to get more grain out of it or less. And then what I'll end up doing is just brush in, brushing in what I need. It seems a little heavy in relationship to everything else. So I'm going to lower the contrast on here a little bit. Bring this, adjust this till it disappears. I'm looking at the edges. About right there. Pretty juicy. All right. And then what I'll do is I'll mask that off. Go with black. Brush that back in here. And then we have full on rig where we had a rig motion where we didn't have any, where we just airbrushed. So we bring that back in the way we want it. And I can actually adjust. Look at that, it blends right into, it starts to cross there, but that's the cutoff for me is right in that section there. And I'll probably duplicate this and add a little blur to it. So it matches the background a little bit more because it's a little heavy. I'll duplicate it, I'll call this uh, uh, grain motion. Wow, this thing does not like me hitting buttons. Grain motion. Uh, org. That was my original. Call this grain motion. And right, I'm going to blur this. Filter blur, Gaussian blur, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. See, I still see the difference. I still see the difference here. Go so 0.2, 0 0.3. Point four. Turn off my preview. Okay. Your point five looks like. Looks like we just did. Point, we committed to point five. Whoa! We just got raided. Hello, Paul. How's it going? Welcome. Hello, we are adding motion to our airbrushed curb here. We're trying to bring it alive. Glad everybody's able to come and have some fun. Now, we've got this in here, we can see it. And I just want to start to brush it back just a tiny bit. I, I, do, have, I do have lots of history, uh, some good, some bad, you know, like everybody else. Uh, you know, I have, to, I have to apologize though. I don't have much raid experience, so uh, if there's something I should be doing. Let me know if not. Uh, continue to enjoy the stream. We're not on a tight schedule. I do have to be out at noon, but uh, thanks for joining, guys. This is kind of exciting. Never been raided before. I mean, I have been, but it was well. We won't get into that. Uh, so the reason I went on Twitch is because nobody else in the automotive industry is on Twitch. So I was like, Hey, it's time for a first, right? Uh, yeah, it was just a matter of, so the, the whole reason behind it was, you know, since the pandemic, a lot of people were basically coming on, uh, well, nobody was taking portfolios uh, at the advertising agency. Someone's taking portfolios. Nobody's taking, uh, meetings. You know, face to face because nobody's in the freaking office and they're like we're not going to have a meeting because we can't bring everybody to the uh um to the office for a meeting anyways and then it was like well what if we did a portfolio review over uh over zoom and then we can look at my work and i can talk about it and they're like nobody wants to sit in a zoom for an hour and look at your stuff and i was like okay well you know instagram kind of has its own stream 
or uh, not own stream, but its own algorithm for what people see. So you don't have tons of control over what art directors, you know, see your stuff and, and what art directors don't. And I kind of decided uh, in, um, yeah, basically, not say pitching, but basically like an insight into how do I work. I'm doing this stuff. Uh, I'd kind of started to decide to dive into 3D and to CGI. And when I started diving into CGI, I noticed that there was like nothing out there being able to show me how all this stuff was being done. So I figured, why not just take what I wanted to do and create onto streaming on Twitch and then get the audience to be able to participate in the content I wanted to create anyways. And then this way I got to do whatever I wanted uh, as well as have, you know, build an audience at the same time. And if the people that I wanted to work with wanted to see how I worked or my work or whatever, they would have an opportunity to come and watch uh, and be a part of what was going on and come when the time uh, worked best for them. That's kind of how that whole thing started uh, was I made this wanted to make the switch, not make a full switch, but wanted to dive into CGI and, um, Thought it would be fun to just stream what I was doing while I was doing it anyways, because, you know, why not let people see into stuff that you're doing? Um, I was going to be doing it anyways. And if I can generate revenue while doing something I want to do in my free time, why the hell not? So it was a, there were a lot of wins. Yeah, so, it, you know, I've had some people come in from agencies and uh, check the stuff out, which was pretty cool uh kind of like a little proof of concept and then um how did i end up in the automotive industry uh it's it kind of it's funny how stuff kind of chooses you you know when you're in school you're just kind of you're shooting fashion you're shooting portraiture you kind of find out who you are i had kind of fallen into uh all this stuff um it was like uh I was working, I worked as a composite artist for photographer Jill Greenberg. And then I was also printing in a dark room for, with photographers, uh, James Fee. I had printed, uh, for a master printer named Lior Levine. Um, he was doing work for Matthew Ralston, um, and, uh, Moshe Bracca. And then Moshe Bracca got into digital retouching and I started doing, uh, Doing that for him and it all just kind of started happening and then uh, another photographer by the name of Robert Kirian um, kind of invited me along into his world uh, as an intern and you know he had kind of stuff uh, on his cutting room floor he had shot he was not a motor photographer and I started checking that stuff out and I was like well, this stuff's kind of cool and then I was like oh what if we took uh, this background and this car and combine them together and then I just started you know, doing whatever I wanted and, uh, you know, kind of piecing together the stuff that he had uh, shot, combining shoots and stuff. And that was basically how we uh, started working together. And that, and that was, that was it from there. I went, you know, I went to art center for photography, art center college of design in Pasadena. Um, and the way I got into compositing, funny story, uh, my dad had lost his job in my last semester at Art Center, and so I didn't get the loan for the living expenses. And, uh, you know, back then it was like, I don't know, it was like 10 grand for the semester, eight grand for living expenses. So I didn't have any money to like buy film and, and do shoots and stuff like that. But digital was just coming out. We, they had like in the, <laughs> in like the, where we rented all of our equipment, they had the Nikon Coolpix cameras, and they uh, uh, the Nikon Coolpix cameras, and they uh, I would rent those out, shoot my projects on them, and we weren't allowed to use digital cameras, so I'd Photoshop the mistakes in them to make them look like I had shot them with film, and that's kind of how I got into Photoshop. Uh, yes, Photoshop is definitely for post production, the industry standard for what I do. Uh, I don't really know anybody else. I mean, there isn't really any other image compositing uh, program that I'm aware of. 
Um, so yeah, Photoshop's just kind of been it. Are you worried about video overtaking Photoshop? No, because there's always a still component to to everything. Um, uh, motion motion's important, but uh, you know everybody can still take a picture, and I think that's what makes photography relatable. Plus, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like it's weird. I mean, from my perspective, I feel like agencies like to kind of do things the way they've always done them in a weird way. And I don't feel like they want to get away from the still image anytime soon. I feel like it's a little bit, uh, just a big part of what they do. Um, I work in Shopify e-commerce. We almost always prefer a video of the product over a photo if had the choice. Not that I think I'm right. You know, it's interesting. You would think with cars that might be the case, right? Like, because cars are in motion and there's movement that, you know, photography would be a big, or, you know, motion would kind of take over. And it's a big part of it. But uh, for some reason, static assets have always just been a big part of, uh, of automotive. It's always been something people have really wanted to see and it's just a big part, I think, of uh, automotive advertising in general, uh, the still imagery. I, th I think there's a, there's a lot to be said about the one second impression that you get uh, with print that you don't get with motion. With motion, you got to kind of be there for a little bit to get something. So the agencies create content and they do the ad buy. It's interesting because I believe if I, oh, my drink. oh there, I believe that uh, a big part of uh, what the agencies spend money on is like, I think like 10% is creative and 90% is ad buy. So most of the money goes into buying the advertising and a small part goes into. <laughs> A small portion goes into actually creating the content. Um, again, I could be wrong, but uh, yeah. And then there's and then there's there's also projects, which is primarily this, the work that I do, where clients uh, kind of hire stuff directly, or um, you know, like the manu, like Toyota, the actual client will hire. You know, will have a a smaller budget project and work directly with content creators or like a, uh, a third party to create content. Interesting. Yeah. I, you know, and again, I could be wrong. I, I just think that when you're doing like a Serp a Super Bowl ad, it might cost you say, I don't know, 3.5 million to make the commercial, but you might spend 305 million on buying advertising spots to distribute that commercial. So it's a little, I think in that aspect, when they create content, it goes to more places than, yeah, so here's a little bit of kind of the whole thing here. Let me close this. Back to here, go to, yeah, so this is a little bit of what we've done. So this was a demo that I did uh, up at Art Center. And this is the this is the original image that was shot. This is our base kind of rig exposure. And then um, we've gone in and added some of the light panels that I liked originally, uh, some of the windshield. Uh, we then rotated the rig with the camera in a different area to get sunlight on the the side of the car to light the door so it wasn't totally black. And then uh, this is kind of the, you can see the rig attached to the car, got rid of that. Uh, some of the headlight cleanup, the bumper cleanup and the badge. Um, some of the adjustments 
to the, the bumper because it's not a brand new vehicle. And then, and then on the fly, just kind of decided that we wanted to make this road look like it was kind of coming from behind something. So I'll kind of probably get rid of some of this tree. Uh, we didn't add motion. Uh, we shot it with, uh, with a rig shot to get motion. So basically, uh, I think I have, yeah, this should be, I think this is static. Let's see here. Turn that off, go to normal. This is a static shot of what the car looked like. And then what we did was we rolled the car back, I don't know, probably five feet over the period of eight seconds to get the exposure to make it look like this. And then we uh, pieced all that together. And now what we're doing is we're going in and we're actually getting rid of the, uh, the rig itself. Adding, adding all the pretty pieces in. So like this is, this is part of the rig removal on the top here. This is where, oh, you know what? I was actually on the bottom here. Getting rid of the, just added that, didn't I? Ah, oh, there it is. They were cleaning this up. And here I'm basically just kind of stamping, using the stamp tool to kind of get rid of uh, the shadow that the rig had cast onto the ground. And we have to use the stamp tool because um, we want to mirror the motion that's already there. And uh, for some reason, Photoshop just wants to be super glitchy today. Oh yeah, of course. Once been a business owner who photoshops images, car dealers send them basically car dealer takes a shit crappy photo out to the dealership. Uh, yeah, I mean there's so much of that stuff. That's how I, you know what that's that's what kind of made me do the push from shooting to or from you know doing post to getting into finally just deciding to do it myself was that I had gotten so many jobs where they're like, hey, can you fix this? Literally, uh, we'll look it up. It is literally a shot on the floor of the Detroit Auto Show. We're going to look this up. We're going to take a step. We're going to step away from this. We're going to get distracted because we have ADD, and that's how we roll. Uh, let's see here if I can find this. Um, but, yeah, so there's an old magazine back in the day called MPH, Miles Performance Horsepower, and they would go and basically, let's see here if I can, MPH, H Magazine, and they would basically, hello, welcome, how's it going? And we, they basically like create these crazy stories. So there's this, let me see if I can open image and new tab. Oh, here's a crazy story. Open image and new tab, open image and new tab. There we go. So this is, this is back in the day, right? So I forget, I can't even tell when year this was. This was, all they shot was this car, this car, and this car all separately on the floor of the Detroit Auto Show. They shot some pictures uh, in downtown Detroit that they dropped in, and I went in and put them in water, added motion, uh, and dropped the rain. And because I had an agency doing movie posters and DVD packaging, I'd gotten some of the rain from Sin City. And so uh, that's basically how that was created. And then, you know, put water droplets on. You can't really tell there, but this is some of the stuff from back in the day that I used to get. It was always just completely crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that was the inspiration for that. And so that's, that's where a lot of my kind of background came from was, you know, I started composite, composite work and then got into doing movie posters and DVD packaging. And then that's kind of where I, uh, I don't know, I think a lot of my cinematic inspiration comes from is doing one sheets. So yeah, it's a big part of how I kind of got to where I'm at. So let's see here. Okay. This thing does not want to behave for me. I use content aware features for the I do, but so 
when I want this thing to be content aware, I've got, so I've got, I guess I use my brush. I've got motion here. I've got motion going this way. I've got my shadow, which is being cast. I've got these things that I'm trying to get rid of. And then they all kind of like go in different directions. So it ends up being like a mishmash of mud. And like sometimes like, like of the stuff that I've explained before, like uh, the stuff will get to the point where I've used content aware stuff or like the healing. And for the most part, I have to end up going back and redoing it myself for it to look more accurate. So in terms of like a, a, a time saving process, it's always been better to just do everything from scratch because it's so much more work trying to fix what the AI has done as opposed to just doing it originally as an airbrush. This area I'm trying to clean up. It's tough because the segments are kind of blurred. So I have to then do this, but in a slight opacity, so it matches. <laughs> you want to take pictures of hot girls? Yeah, you know, it's funny how what pays the bills. You know, it's, you know when I moved in, uh, in movie posters and DVD packaging, we always had to throw in the, like, sex sells version of whatever it was that we were working on. And normally it would never get bought, but it was always, like, legs in a shot with the scene of whatever's going on in front. It's, it's, it's funny how... It's also interesting how times have changed and what people want has changed as well. But then there's also stuff that is still the same and will never change. You know, it's funny, I actually, I haven't been back into movie posters in forever. I still have some movie poster friends that still work on this stuff. Um, but nothing, I, I haven't been in it long enough or in a while to know what trends are happening now. I mean, I, last I did, so I had my agency doing movie posters and DVD packaging between 2005 and 2009, right before the, the crash. And when I was doing my agency, I was like, I loved it. It was my favorite thing in the world. You know, I mean, you're making bank. I was like 25 years old making six figures, sometimes five in a month. And I'd be like, what? So I was just totally crazy. Uh, I don't think anybody at that age should be making that much money. <laughs> I spent it all on stupid crap, like a Porsche. Anyways, Porsches are my favorite. Anybody who wants to know. Now we're just kind of cleaning this up, getting rid of a lot of this uh, shadow area that's reflecting on the ground. I'm not too concerned about the shadow area over these uh, over this brownish line here because those are pine needles in there, by the way. Nobody wants to know why that is brown. The trees. I'm just going to kind of do this at a lower opacity here. And I just blend this in-ish. I always love the questions though. Feel free to keep them coming. See. All right, got almost an hour left here for said meeting. You know, it's funny. I am so paranoid that I have never missed. Well, okay. Yes. One time. And it was, it was only because the client or it wasn't the client. It was actually when I won, uh, uh, Losers or Lester's Archive, uh, their top 200 ad photographers. I think it was of 2019. And I had done uh, uh, the images and I was sending them a different crop. So what went to the client didn't have the mistake in it, but their crop was different. And I had made a crop in my, like I basically, you know, like done like this and then selected the outside and filled it with black one when I cropped it originally, when I sent it to the client. So I uh, sent <laughs> sent my image to go to print and it had the top of the foam core that was blocking the sun from hitting my camera and the top of the frame was a little white square and that went to print. 
and nobody noticed uh, except for my conscience, which sucked. But yeah, I mean, it happens. I see people's stuff all the time, but I know that like most people don't notice stuff. Because how long do you look at something? What like maybe two seconds, maybe a second? Like it's not enough time to like comb through an image and and notice something crazily wrong. But I do pick up on stuff all the time. It's funny, and then you then you like tell yourself like, well, why would they ever hire that person, or you know? Why would they ever use that? That stuff sucks. Well, nobody notices. At the end of the day, people hire whoever they want to hire for whatever reason. You know, and I, another reason why I got into this. Yeah, nobody notices. Another reason why I got into this is because uh, you know, one of my. I had a lot of clients uh, retire specifically this year, or no, not this year, last year. And it was like, you know, oh, what was I going to do? Build up a new base or like go after new people? And, you know, the, again, the struggle of like nobody's taking meetings, nobody's looking at portfolios. They're kind of just going off what they see on, a, on Instagram or on social or people they follow. And I was like, nah, I want to go back to the stuff that I love doing. Like, I love fantasy worlds. I love, like, I want to do, I have this project that I want to do is called Pink Eclipse, uh, where it's it's literally, it's imagine completely like matte black mountains, uh, like Iceland, matte black uh, mountains with black rock uh, and uh, bioluminescent pink water over an ice lake or that flows underneath an ice lake with like a beautiful black, like, I don't know, Remac or something, something, some crazy exotic car. It's lit by uh, an eclipse. Uh, you know, stuff like that. I want to do like that's the stuff that makes makes the stuff exciting for me. So, you know, be able to go back and do what I love, and then hey, if someone wants to hire me to do that stuff, awesome. But if not, because it's funny how you kind of get pigeonholed, and I get pigeonholed like everybody does. What do you specialize in? What's your thing? I get pigeonholed into doing black cars at night. That was like. It happened out of necessity, and then it just continued on from there. I appreciate all the love, guys. It means a lot to me. Um, I love doing this stuff, and I love helping people with being able to do what they want to do. And I don't have any secrets because all my ideas are in my head. And uh, you can't build a career off technique. Uh, any advice for getting your foot in the door? I don't know. If anybody had advice for me to get my foot in the door, uh, just keep shooting. I would say just keep shooting and get your stuff out there. That's really it. Um, that's really what's going to, I think, get you noticed is that you're doing what you love and you're putting it everywhere. And people get a chance to see it. I think if people see you doing what you love and they like it then they'll want to be a part of it and then the rest is easy right <laughs> none of this is easy or everybody would be doing it but yeah i mean it's it's ultimately a lot of work i'm gonna cheat this guys i'm just gonna airbrush this stuff see what it looks like because i feel like the stamp's a little too heavy uh from uh, instagram moving away from photography isn't really no i mean it's still there but uh, I feel like the algorithms on Instagram kind of mess everybody up. I don't really feel like my work's getting in front of the people that I want to work with. Like I've, you know, I've done, it, it's just weird. You know, like I've done special projects uh, and I've gone directly after clients and I've shown them like what I can do. And they've been like, yeah, that's awesome. And then I'm like, so we're going to work together. And they're like, and you're like, hello? Okay, so you don't know. I don't know. It's funny. And you're amazing. Oh, really? Hire me. We're good. We got, we're with, you know, we're doing it. We'll get back to you. We'll call you. So it's hard. It's hard. But, you know, if you just do what you love, which is what I love, you know, I'm doing what I love. 
And you put your work out there. You never know, man. You never know. Success is capitalizing. It's what? It's when experience meets opportunity, right? So if you've prepared yourself for any opportunity that comes your way, you can be successful. Dude. Another rule I have. Clients will always complain about how much you cost. I almost encourage it. Like I'm coming, I'm almost like if this client doesn't complain about the cost, I'm clearly not charging enough. And two, they can always complain about the cost as long as they're never creating or complaining about the work. They can they can bitch all day about how much OT or shot or do we really need this COVID stuff in here in the estimate or the budget? Totally fine with me. Complain away, producer deal. Uh, at the end of the day, if they're like, "Man, this stuff's great," you're doing your job right. I don't have to worry about the cost. I feel like almost, and you know, you got to set your limits, right? This is what I'll do for this much, and I won't do anything less, and stick to it. People will respect you just as much for what you will do as for what you won't do. They will. You know, if they don't think of you for all the jobs that are a certain amount of, you know, money because they think you're too expensive, then you probably didn't want to do that job anyways. You know? kind of how that is I feel I also feel like respect is an oxymoron in this industry as well now we're just kind of getting rid of this shadow here so much shadow. I think I'm going to go back to my stamp. Here, we're going to rotate this brush. I thought about doing like a critique stream, you know, where like people mention photographers and we kind of go through and like look at what we like and what we don't like. I don't know if that's bad or good. Or people's own work. We can go through other people's stuff. This is not working out the way that I want it to. Do <laughs> do you? It'll be a separate day. Maybe I'll, it'll be something that I schedule on here. People throw up their stuff. We go through it. Kind of like what we could add, take away, what's working, what isn't working. And again, the, the toughest part about that, right, is that it's all subjective. It's something that I might not like, somebody else might love. So it's almost not fair. So I'm still thinking about it. I figured I'd let the channel dictate what they want to see, and the rest is just kind of happen on its own. There's one other this thing just am I not clicking hard enough? I don't know if any other guys use Wickham tablets on PC because I'm just having the nightiest of nightmares. Like it won't, I option, like I alt click right there. Well, it sampled it this time, but sometimes it just won't get it. Let me see here. I'm trying this at 60%. Let's, let me just try this thing. I'm going to do the content to where and see where that gets us on this. Let's see if this works. I think it'll look like a giant mishmash of, of, uh, di of uh, diarrhea, but that's just my opinionation. We merged everything. I'm going to go here. Go to our content to where. There we go. Let's try the spot healing brush, see what that does. Spot healing. 
This is why I don't use it. They have all these on automated things. Uh, I'll try. See if I do. Let's see, is it going to go in the motion? See, complete gunk. Look at that. It's just mud. Or if I try like a softer brush, maybe. Bigger brush. Let's go straight down. Nope. Yeah. Tried softer. Tried. We'll do the patch tool. Let's see if the patch tool works. Patch tool. Patch me in, baby. Patch. Anything? See, it looks like it worked, right? But then you look at the edges. Gummy diarrhea, smudgy junk. Just, yeah, Photoshop. So what I will do is, this is the only way I would cheat, right? I would cut this out. <laughs> I'll cut this out, right? Do paste that, we'll turn the main layer off. So I'll take what I just did, right? So I'll take that. And then I can come in here and kind of get this to match ish. Right? Get some of those lines to match up in there. Right? So there's that. Get my curves, the clip curves to it. And then I do it, like blur my eye, right? I'm going to blur some of it. I'm making this lighter so I can. Well, use my eye, uh, blur that out, right? And then I'll mask this a little black. <laughs> APC. A little bit black. Come in here and brush that part back in. A hundred percent. So we're brushing the thing I just copied in here, right? Looks like garbage, but we have our adjustment layer in here. So I'm going to adjust this part here, but we want lighter. Also, we're going to kind of match the top part. And then I'll gradient the bottom part out. And then just It's working ish. Still looks like still looks like mud. If I back up. Pen or mouse. Uh do you use a pen? I have a pen, but I get glitchy, it gets glitchy, so I have to go to a mouse. Uh, on certain things, like the brush size, for some reason. Like I make this layer, right? Uh, I'll fill it with black. It's funny. I like to use a mouse for CG. I don't like. I don't like a Wacom tablet for CG. I don't feel like it lends itself to it. Even if I'm modeling. Barely works in here. Bring some of it back in here. I feel like I should have made a bigger piece. Eh, it's looking all right. Go all the way up there. It does it does ish goes to the curb? So to me, I can't see that, right? Can't see it. Maybe a little bit up there. I think we got rid of it. So 
Always the way. Go too far. I don't know if you've gone far enough. I'm just gonna. Here's another cool ish trick. You get a new layer, fill it with gray. Edit fill 50%. Gray. Soft light. Then you can use your burn and dodge tools without actually affecting the image. I usually put this thing on 50% because it's so intense. I'm just kind of lining a light in this area here. And just affect the layer I'm working on. There. Actually going to duplicate it, fill it with gray again. Soft light. We're still on soft light. I'm going to just use it here. So rather than retouch this part out, I can just lighten it. What shadow? Again, by putting this 50% gray layer on soft light, I can then use the burn and dodge tools without having that affect my entire image and they can be on their own layer. And the cool thing is sometimes I like to, if I'm doing people, I'll go in there really hot, really aggressive with my burning and dodging, and then I can change the opacity as I wish. <laughs> no, I haven't been to Anissa's bar. The, the, uh, Oct something, what's it called? Talking about Anissa Davis, right? Only Anissa I know. Nectar. Nectar. Nectar bar. Oh, no, I didn't. Did not go. I'm just kind of dodging this part out. This just kind of gives you a way of like, these are all the different ways you can work this thing out. We on time here. Less than an hour. I think that's, that just puts us good. Literally just dodged all that stuff out. Go in here a little bit. What am I at? 11? How heavy this thing is and the layer we're on, is it 50%? I'm going to try and stamp this out here. Make a new layer, stamp. Oof. Help me clean some of this stuff. It's already here. You like the content over better? I don't know. See, now I delved into this thing. I went, went to my dodge, started stamping stuff out from underneath it. Didn't look right. Yo, can I kind of go with this in here? When I do this, I'm trying to match some of the lines that are already there. Like this line here. Mm. 
So I'm going to click here. And I'm going to bring this here and keep that. Kind of going too far to see what I can do here. This part, funky. Can I brush all that in? I did. So I can get rid of it. 130 on our mask here. Go 20. Excuse me. Get those burps come through the mic whether I want them to or not. Are you getting rid of this stuff here? Oh. Continue to get rid of this here. Now, I'm going to use some of this in here. I just want to see what I masked out. But I basically want to kind of work these little areas that are a little blotchy. The tiny bit of dodge tool. I mean tiny bits. Be a 10 here. I'm just lightly cleaning this up. Again, nothing that nobody else but us is going to notice. 20. And make a new one. Of course, I was brushing on the mask of that, so that didn't help. Make a new one. Just do 50. Again, these gray layers don't affect the image until we actually do something to them. Let's see here. Ten percent opacity. Again, just kind of cleaning up some of this blotchiness in here. Smooth out. Like the fine tuning stuff that drives me crazy. You've been looking at it for so long. You start to imprint on your retina. You're like, is that actually there? Or am I. Super, super subtle. And just kind of, again, this is just the super finite part. Just 
I prevent this from looking. Blotchy. By just subtly touching, the, I'm what am I? Ten percent here. Ten percent on this dodge tool. My gray layer. Too much. We went too far. It's going to burn now. And. Of course, it changes my brush. Here, oh, man, these are this is the fine stuff. This is stuff you really only tell mom about. All right, We're close. There, I think. I mean, I'm never happy with anything. I think that's why we do this stuff, right? Do something we like, and then we're like, ah, that satisfaction is gone. Going on to the next one. All right. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll just let me just duplicate this. J, fill it with gray again. And I'll just kind of do like an overall, this 50%. <coughs> and I see a dark area right here that I'm going to get rid of. So I'm going to get rid of my dodge, 10% here. Just slowly work this little area that I'm seeing like a bar the super light These are just things that literally only we are going to notice. I want this to go from light to dark here. All right, we have time here. So back to the trees. Actually, getting rid of these. Delete this. This is my merged layer from earlier. Where we're at, uh, back to the trees. Here's the top part. What? I know what that is. I think what we'll do is just kind of combine all this as a bumper, or we'll call this curb front. And save. All right, where are we at now? Oh, of course the top rig is in there. Figure out where that at. that's all at. Uh, I think that's up here. Cool. Is this also that? No. Cool. So let's let's take this out of where we were. We have that still separate. All right, and we're gonna continue. rid of this this little piece here I think I 
take from here, put here, and then go over that. Trying to keep all the blue in there. It doesn't seem to want to be my friend. Or, yeah, the blue from the sky. Keep this streak. Put it in here. There we go. Mm. Worked for like all of a second. That's hard, this part. And like a new layer. You just get sloppy and then go back in and airbrush some stuff out. New layer that I'm just going to do our brush on. Seems like that's what this thing wants and not the clone amp tool. So we're kind of getting that in there a little bit. Go heavy now. Again, uh, you can go in every now, you get rid of later. So that's the objective. Make this brush narrower to match kind of the tree width that we have there. And go 40%. Or 30%. That's slowly starting to disappear in there. Back to our stamp tool, and I'll go back to the previous layer underneath. We can start bringing back. More tree. I'm trying to see if I have a, this will this will mix match in here, and then I can kind of, we've got our brush over, and then come here. <clears throat> you know what I want to do actually is brush more of this on here. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. Doing this at 20. Yeah. Now we're looking happy and real. Let's see. Yeah, I'm actually going to take it back a tiny bit. I mean to sample that. We done, computer? You're just yelling at me. Thirty percent. Gonna hide that. There we go. Come over here. Get a new layer. Camping away at this. We are on the clock. Yeah, I see this mirrored here, so I'm just going to immediately pick something somewhere else and just break it up a tiny bit so it's not exactly the same. As you can see, there's some white clouds in there. Yeah. I 
Got this here. Slowly getting rid of that. I'm almost to where I want to be using a brush for the rest of this. <laughs> I sampled from above. Whoa, where'd that come from? we go. Oh. Don't get too cloggy. Uh, Photoshop will always humble you. Remind you that there's no easy way to content aware yourself out of anything. Slowly working this here. I'm going to kind of break some of the... Oh, man. This thing does not want to sample when I want it to sample. It's kind of frustrating. Maybe it's my pen tip. <laughs> you can't see that, but that's probably the pen tip. I'm going to undo that and start brushing. No, no, F it. It's in here. Not in here. Yeah, I want to brush. It's time to brush. Where am I at? 30. Cool. So I'm sampling blue, but it's giving me gray. There we go. I'm going to change the tip of this to match the strokes of our trees. You know, I wonder if Bob Ross has a tutorial on trees in motion. I'd love to see that one. I've just sampled some tree color here. Just painting trees in motion. At this point, this thing doesn't want to work at all for me. I have to sample twice. It's weird because it gives, uh, yeah, it's definitely the pen. It gives me the option of sampling, but then just disappears. Why am I seeing that? I'm seeing this bar there. I can't figure out why. Maybe because I haven't painted over it yet. I just kind of sampling from each side, going back, sampling this side. We're almost there. I uh, kind of have to be. I only have 30 minutes left. I'll go to 60. I'm going to create a new layer just for safety because I don't want to F up what I just did uh, on accident. All right, new layer, stamp, the rest of this stuff should be fairly. I always say it's going to be easy, but it isn't. I always say it's going to be hard, and it ends up being easy-ish. That curve was supposed to be hard, but it ended up being right. Stamping my way out of this. It's not sampling where I want it to. I want to clone more in there, that's for sure. I'm going to try being a little sloppy here just for time's sake, and then come back and fix, and fix the details if I need to. Try to find something that's in the same motion as this. Ah. Uh, 
I'm trying to figure out where I can grab this from. That doesn't look right. Here we go. I see a finish line here somewhere. Gonna clone this out. I will go into the car. Ah, I want the car in my shot. We'll clone my way into the car. I'll mask that out so it's clean, flush clean. There, put a mask on there, go to a hard brush. So guys, I'm gonna have to kind of blow through this part here. Let's be on the stamp tool. I wanna be on the brush tool. With this brush. Here we go. I'm just kind of working this in here. I like to get rid of all of it and then bring it back. One hundred percent. We are. Here we go. Now we're back. Now we're covered. No more rig, guys. I don't like this box over here. We'll get rid of that. I'm gonna grab all this stuff. Rig top. What the hell is that? So this is I'm sure that's my original grain layer. Grain motion. Which was on this curb. Go to curb front. Grab this, bring this back in there. We don't want a mess. So you guys know what's going on here. Nope, oh, wrong curb. Curb rear. this grain so I don't forget. Bring that to the top. Save. Um, yeah, that. Make this new layer to get rid of this. Box over here we don't like. Really this thing's going to be a piece of ass. That looks horrible. Well, we changed our brush. I always, I usually stamp with the hard or soft brush. We'll, we'll work smaller in this area. There we go. We'll gently continue this brush down into our lawn. Like this. There we go. All right. Zoom out of this thing. Now we will hit the so that's Call this uh, lawn left. I 
I'll go to the actual vehicle and we'll just start hitting up the oh you know what I did want to fix this uh, windshield here rig removal I like the darker area which will so we'll go back to that let's see can I just there's the roof the hood the fender that piece part of the a pillar window Let's go back to the window here let's see what this stuff is we start to get dark there hmm. really as easy as just turning off that one layer Ish. No, I think we definitely want to do something darker in there. Got our A pillar here. Adjust strictly the A pillar. There is some, yeah. What is this from though? Top of the A pillar on the window. Big split. I'm gonna go above these. I'll do my brush in here. my caps log off I'm gonna try I think we had gone to the I think I already have brushes here I have any cloud brushes in here leaves tree leaves clouds clouds of smoke sure what was that 100% some of this here. I'm go to 20%. What I'm trying to do is just get a hint of cloudiness. I'm going to do that. I'm going to just slightly, and I'm going to blur that. Motion blur. The direction of our rig. More blur. Just if I represent clouds before I actually drop them in there, there we go. And then I'm going to darken the area underneath, which is what I want with my older brush. Um, 20%, see how that looks. I'm kind of liking this. I'm doing really heavy, and I'll go back. I think. I'm going to mask all that out. I wonder if it happens if I bring this above this. Clouds above that layer. It gives me a cloud in there, and all I'll do is I'll go gradient, and I'll mask it out a little bit so it's not so prominent. Better. I like that. Group that, call it window dark. See if I have the windshield anywhere here. Uh, trying to cheat. Screw it, no cheating. Well, 10. Hard brush. Oh, we're going to fill it with black and just brush it in where we want it. Under white, EX zero. Put on a brush. We will brush this in.
I'm going to brush this in. I just want to kind of take some of the saturation out of this. There. We go to, I wanted to brush that in. I guess we'll do that now because I won't really have another chance to do it later. Do a passenger door, passenger window. Go. Uh, what I wanted to do was just clean this up a bit. I like the, I like the fall off from here to here. I'll do the same thing here. I'm gonna sample this. Again, <laughs> I need a new wake up tablet dip. One thirty. Just kind of bringing this in here. Uh, we'll mask that out, fill it with black, and just brush in what we want. Go to hard. Hundred uh, percent. That's what we want. So I'm noticing now. There's a little bit of that. Rig reflected into the side view mirror there. This is obviously really thick, and I wouldn't keep it this thick for final. This is just to get this started. Come over here. Rig removal. I'll just throw a new layer in here. I'll go to my stamp tool and just get rid of this. Back to here, passenger window. I'm going to group that. Actually, that's the driver window, isn't it? Change that to a D. Um, I'm going to throw a gradient on there. Oh, man, these man keys just don't line up. That's super heavy in there. I'm gonna pull that back. Even though I've already put a gradient mask on there. Looks good to me. I'm going to do general click cleanup on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge everything into one layer. Command option control out shift E should be it. Shift E. There we go. Oops. Alt E. There we go. It wants to be. I don't want to. I didn't want to take this last layer here. So I'm going to go into here, and I'm just going to kind of just do healing brush tool. And shift J to cycle through, and just get all this little crap in here. Take time to do some color on this thing. Just doing the stuff that I see. Right off the bat. If you don't like this, I'm going to try and see if I can get rid of it in a way that looks good. If not, I'll just keep it since we're under time constraints here. Nope. Actually, it looks all right there. Noticing a little rig in here. Just 
Gonna get this stuff out of here. This is all the things. The only, how do I know what stuff to get, what not to get? I usually just get the stuff that is the most distracting, the stuff that I notice. Because again, people aren't going to notice. This is between you, yourself, and your image. We're doing on time. Oh, less than 15 minutes. Like we're not going to clean up that bumper anytime soon. But. In a little, what that is. Alrighty. Let's get all this stuff out of the way here. And I'm just trying to get the stuff that's most noticeable since I'm under a time constraint here. All right. Anything here we have on the door here? I didn't like this. All right. Looks good to me. All right, save that. I'm going to flatten my image. Well, let's see. Let's save it in here in my main folder as a TIFF. There we go. Uh, gonna go to Lightroom. Import our shot. Oh, it's gonna make me go through. I don't even know where this thing. Uh, let's see here. Users. There we go. Go to develop here. So first, I'm gonna check these shadows. Ooh, lift them a tiny bit, right? So you get a little detail in there. So I'm gonna make the blacks even slightly blacker. Uh, see if we get a little crispiness in the clarity, like not too much. Another thing I noticed with the R5 is, oh, this isn't actually the R5, this is the, 5D, I think we're still going to give it just a little bit of saturation in there. Sort of contrast looks like it's chunky this up a little bit. I think we're all right. I'm going to change this to middle gray to see what this be dark. This is slightly dark. I'm going to get a little snap in my yellow, or my yellow, my highlight. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually go in here, start to mess with things a little bit. Really a little hot. It's a black vehicle, so everything will kind of end up being in the lower range of this chart. Um, let's just play with this for a second. We've got oh, nine minutes. A little orange in the highlights there. Use the balance on this. Get a little cyan in my shadow. Orange in my highlight. See if this wants to go anywhere with me. Tiny bit. My whites, my highlights are a little hot here, so I'm gonna bring my exposure down a little bit. So it'll make it a little moody. Click on those blacks. A little too much. I don't know. 
pull this back, pull it, pull this back. Check my blending here. Kind of liking a little warm. Go there with it. We've got detail and everything. Check on the sharpness on this thing just a tiny bit. Just bring a little bit of that in here just, just to make the edges a little fun. I think we're going to go to our shadows and just bring them down a tiny bit. So lift it. What if I bring this all the way? Yeah, I think we can probably bring some more highlight in here. Go too hot. It's gross. I would say they were shot. That's it, guys. We found the end. Let's see. Yay! So what I'm going to do is we'll I'll uh, I'll save off the layered file. I'll find like a link, uh, a shareable link space. Uh, I'll I'll give you the raw images, the layered file. Um, and uh, the Lightroom file with all the little adjustments that we made to this, uh, so you can get in there and uh, play with it yourself. But uh, I mean, for the most part, uh, this this is uh, this is a happy shot. No, you know, we can get crazy with the uh, clarity. I know people like to do that. Not really my thing. We can soften it up a little bit. Get rid of that. You know, it's it's all. Some of the stuff subjective. But this is, you know, if I go lower, I get moodier, but then, you know, now I like that too. Anywho, uh, I'll put all that stuff in the comment section. Thanks again, guys, for coming out. I appreciate it. Uh, who knows what's next? I'll have to think on it. Um, I don't know if we'll go back into the CGI. Ooh, this thing like a little magenta in the shadow. I didn't like. Yeah, who knows what's next? I'll keep you posted. Uh, stick around for more fun, learning tips, experience, and shared information. And maybe more parties. You never know.